At the heart of the human, there is the breath. This breath gives our life inspiration, creates us, and we recreate this breath with our exhaling. We create through the breath when it becomes word. The word is a form of sculpture of the breath and at the same time a form of resonance of this sculpture in movement. I like to combine the word sculpture and resonance to create the word sculptance. That word is a form of sculpting in motion, sculptance, a dance. And this dance of the breath creates a multitude of emotions, ideas, actions. And this is in all human activity on earth. The role of speech is the quintessence of humanity and vitality. Each mineral has a particular inner sound of great wisdom, as with the plants and the animals. Man, by contrast, is completely free in his sound, be it musical or spoken. He can express great wisdom, but also ugliness and desolation. It is really a very great creative force and freedom, but also a great responsibility. In many sacred texts from different cultures around the world, we find references to the creative sound, the word of the gods that creates the world, the word of the origins. We can say that in the heart of life, in the heart of the breath, there is the word, and this word is the kernel the heart of the human, his center and simultaneously his origin. The art of Eurythmy studies the world of the life forces, energetics, the etheric forces. We do so by observing the movements of the sounds of language and music. We try to express these movements through the whole body and to dance them, to enter the world of the etheric and to explore the art of Eurythmy. Marie and Rudolf Steiner gave us a meditation that is composed of two times three short sentences. We could speak of two triptychs. The first triptych, I think speech. I speak, I have spoken. The second triptych, I seek myself in the spirit. I feel myself within myself. I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. In the first triptych, we can observe an activity turned towards the world that becomes densified. I think speech, I speak, I have spoken. In the second triptych, the activity is turned towards oneself and towards an inner elevation. I seek myself in the spirit. I feel myself within myself. I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. Schematically, we have two triangles. One turned down. I think speech, I speak, I have spoken. The other turned upwards. I seek myself in the spirit, 
I feel myself within myself, I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. In the first triptych, we go from the inner world of thought to an externalization and incarnation in word, in action. In the second triptych, we go from the outside world, where I look for myself, towards an internalization and an elevation in perception, to feel and finally be. These subtle polarities are expressed in the endings of the triptychs. Once by the verb to have, I spoke, and in the end with the verb to be, I am. In both triptychs we pass a threshold. Once from light to matter, I think speech, I speak, I have spoken. The second time, from matter towards light, I seek myself in the spirit, I feel myself within myself, I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. This meditation is accompanied by bodily positions with a geometric character. These are six figures placed on a frontal plane. The frontal plane is created by the meeting between the front and the rear space. It is a mediator and creates a balance between the front and the back, but on a large surface which contains my whole body with my arms and legs. For the first triptych, I simply place myself in my verticality, in my center of balance. I add the horizontal with my arms and build the figure of a cross, a vertical and a horizontal. In this figure we can see the human being in activity, in himself in the vertical, in community with one's neighbor, in the horizontal, I think, speech. In the second figure, I very slightly spread my feet and the hands rise to the height of the larynx. So it is the speech organ, that which in a way defines the psychological and spiritual dimension of the human being, which is emphasized, our ultimate creative force, speech, I speak. In the third figure, the hands sink to the level of the heart and the legs open enough to form a regular polygon, a pentagon. This is our best possibility to express a circle on this frontal plane and thus to express the principle of roundness, of femininity. I have spoken. For the first triptych, I simply place myself in my verticality, in my center of balance. I add the horizontal with my arms and build the figure of a cross, a vertical and a horizontal. In this figure we can see the human being in activity, in himself, in the vertical, in community with one's neighbor in the horizontal, I think speech. In the second figure, I very slightly spread my feet and the hands rise to the height of the larynx. So it is the speech organ, that which in a way defines the psychological and spiritual dimension of the human being, which is emphasized. Our ultimate creative force, speech, I speak. In the third figure, the hands sink to the level of the heart and the legs open enough to form a regular polygon, a pentagon. 
This is our best possibility to express a circle on this frontal plane, and thus to express the principle of roundness, of femininity. I have spoken. In the second triptych, we place ourselves in exactly the opposite or polar forms, which fit into each other like two pieces of a puzzle, or more precisely, as the negative of an image on its positive. In the first figure of the second triptych, we feel two diagonals forming an X, a cross, opening in all directions. I seek myself in the spirit. Je me cherche dans les... Then we feel our own height with a line that connects our two hands, as well as our own width with our feet. Ce sont nos propres dimensions. These are our own body's dimensions, the body with which we perform deeds. It is our physical dimension. I feel myself within myself. Nous nos bras. In the third figure, we place our arms and legs in two verticals connecting the earth and the heavens. We thus express the principle of linearity, of straightness, of the masculine. I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. In the first figure of the second triptych, we feel two diagonals forming an X, a cross opening in all directions. I seek myself in the spirit. Then we feel our own height with a line that connects our two hands, as well as our own width with our feet. These are our own body's dimensions, the body with which we perform deeds. It is our physical dimension. I feel myself within myself. In the third figure, we place our arms and legs in two verticals connecting the earth and the heavens. We thus express the principle of linearity, of straightness, of the masculine. I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. If we now juxtapose these six figures, these two triptychs, we first have two crosses that fit one into the other. Then the two human dimensions, the psycho-spiritual, speech, and physical, of the body. And finally, the two principles of the whole universe, the feminine, the circle, and the masculine, the straight. I have presented this exercise in detail in my book, Nicolas of Fleur and Prana, in Chapter 5, Entry into the Etheric World. It should be known that this great master of the 15th century and father of Switzerland had the ability to nourish himself from light, unlimited consciousness and the healing power of the word. His great prana meditation is built on the basis of these two triangles and a six-spoked wheel. This is also the basis of the construction of the flower of life. So we could say that the construction of the flower of life forms the basis for the exercise, I think, speech.